So let's take a look at phase five. This one was interesting. Let's let's go back. Okay, so get rid of that breakpoint. We were at phase four. Moved on. Input validator, and we think this is phase five. Okay, look at the calls. Well, if we remember to rename our um, the string length function that we came across in a previous phase, we wouldn't have to dive into that one. We would just see in this call that it's string length. Remember to name functions as you come across them, especially things that are doing some kind of um, you know, manipulation, comparison, it's going to get used somewhere else in the program, most likely. If you want to know if it's going to get used somewhere else in the program, put your cursor on it, type X for cross-references, and you see it's used, it's called multiple times. So when you figure out what something's doing, or even if you just kind of have an idea, name it something. You can always go back and, and retake a look at it later and uh, rename it. So we see there's a string length here on R0, so on, on what it's getting. And if it is, what's this doing? Oh, let me, uh, hold on, let me do that magnify thing. Three. Hey, hey, oh, okay, thank you. Okay, so let's get someone online tell me what is it uh, doing here right after the string wing um, up to the conditional jump. What is that doing? Yeah, does it compare to six? So what what makes it boom or what makes it continue? Yep, the length has to be exactly six. So we know that the where is it? We know that the length of our input string needs to be exactly six characters. And it's right in there. Hmm? It's 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 hard coded in there. What's hard coded? The length is right there. Yeah, yep. All right. So if it's if it's not, then we do the boom. If it is, then we come down here and we have a move zero into a local variable and then a jump down into what looks like a folded line. We got a loop going on here. So, what kind of loop is this? Yeah, this is our for loop with. See what seems to be the the uh, variable. Yeah, the i, the var ten. Okay, let's name that i. Call it something else, but I'm calling it i. That can be a little hard to see though. So actually, let's call that increment var. There we go. That's a little easier to see. So the initialization condition is what? Yeah, let's let's say let's what if we were writing this out? So I have four i equals uh, i equals zero. Yeah. Then what? What's our stop condition? Greater than or equal to six is in here, like that. No, that's 
Yep, like that. So something to keep in mind here is that the compiler um, can do your, while your code might look like this, i is less than six, what the compiler could do is just flip that around and have the um, uh, success condition go out of the loop and have the failure condition go inside of the loop. Just to keep in mind. So then what's the next part of the for loop? Yep, this is the plus plus syntax that we saw before. We'll do I uh, plus plus. Okay, so then what is what is going on here? What is happening inside of this loop? Well, let's see, it looks like it grabs that first our argument to the function. Does something with that. Does an add. So what's this doing? What's in EDX at the, um, after this instruction? Say that again, Kim? It looks like it's taking whatever the value is that you implemented at that time, so it's one and adding it to whatever the value is that you had just that we took from the argument. Okay, so what conceptually what is that doing? What do we have? What's in what's in EDX conceptually? Give you a hint. It's a it's a pointer to something. What was that? What are you gonna say? No, you you're close. So what it R zero is a string. Right, we know it's it's our, our input string, it's what we typed at the keyboard. And if if what we're getting here is, well, more specifically, R0 is actually a pointer to our input string, and that's what gets put into EDX. And if we're adding a value to our pointer, that means that we're going to that position within our string. To that character within our string. So what this is doing is each time through this loop, in the increment variable is going to um, be one greater. Our pointer to the head is going to get um, uh, that is the increment variable is going to get added to our pointer to our to the head of the string. So this is going to go one by one through each character within the input string. Okay, so. So is that just validating or is that actually input? What was that? Is that validating or is that just input? Like, so we have a word that we say, and you said I just want each character. Mm -hmm. Is each. that validating each character to make sure that's there or is it actually input? Well, well that's, that's what this part is. Oh, okay. So now we know, at this point, we know EDX is going to point to whichever character we're on in the string. Um, and each time through the loop, it's going to go to the next character gotcha. in the string. So what is this doing? That should look familiar. The move with the and. So if we're getting a 
first of all, what is this doing? What's going to be in, in EAX after this move SX instruction? Somebody online? Anybody online want to answer? If we're at the move SX instruction, what's going to be in EAX after that instruction is executed? Yep. Yep, that is, since this is a byte pointer, it's saying just grab the byte that's pointed to a car is a single byte. So, and it's going to put that into EAX. And if you take a look at your ASCII table, um, any of the characters that you would enter on your keyboard are going to be below 7F, which means the high byte is always going to be zero. So that sign extend means every other bit above that low order byte is going to be zero. Uh, not that that matters, because what's this doing with your AND, EAX, OF? Somebody here in McLean. What was that? You said that and that zero byte that you were just talking about? No. Okay. No. Okay. This is, so this is just like in the example. What is that doing? It's masking everything except for the last sample. Yes, masking everything except for the first sample. <laughs> Um, so it's the rightmost, we'll say, the rightmost symbol. It's, <laughs> it's getting rid of or making zero because when you and something with zero, it is zero. So everything to the left of the rightmost nibble is going to be zero, and then the rightmost nibble or the low order four bits is going to be. Um, exactly what it was, because when you and something with one, you get the exact same thing back. One and one is one, one and zero is zero. So what this is doing, it's, it's saying we're, we're only, we're going to obviously do some stuff with EAX now, but we're only going to care about the low order four bits of it. So, so what's it doing? down here, where it's, where it's using that EAX value. What is this byte underscore 404580? Yeah, that's an array. Say some array. And since we're doing this move into DL, how many, uh, how many bits or bytes are we grabbing from the array at a time. <laughs> One byte or eight bits, yeah. So if we go take a look at some array, and Ida was nice enough to comment here that, oh, hey, these are, are all less than your 7F, so, and it looks like it's in printable characters range, so I'm going to put comments there. Thank you, Ida. One thing I forgot to do, though, anybody notice what I did not do? First byte. Yeah, the first byte in this array, it didn't identify or it didn't at least put the comment for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that ourselves. Does anybody remember the shortcut for making it show a character? R. R. The gear pirates, R. There you go. So that first one is, what is that, an I. Okay, so back to the code. 
So this is grabbing. So effectively, what is what is this doing? Yeah, it's a simple substitution cipher where it takes um, not just your character, but only it only looks at the low order nibble, and it, it only cares about that part of the character that you enter. So there's going to be multiple answers to this that will be right. So we do that, go through what's What's this doing here, this move? Okay. Sorry, there's a point I missed. What is the meaning of DL? Oh, DL? Yeah. So that is the D DL. It's DL. <laughs> like AL, BL. So DL is the rightmost byte of EDF. Oh, damn. I saw so that. That's that the like 8 byte register, yeah. So okay. if we have EAX, and then we have AX, and we have AL, well, we have AH, and we have AL. So EAX is 32 bits. AX is the low order 16 bits of EX. A high E is the high 8 bits of AX. Oh. And AL is the low 8 bits of AX. Also known as the low 8 bits of EX. Okay. And that's going to be something that you can do for all of the registers um, EAX, EDX, EBX. So you can just substitute B for these. Same thing. So we were moving around asking if it's just convenient to use all the eight bits at a time because that's all you need. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's all you need. Technically all you need is seven bits. Mm -hmm. And there's an actual encoding that is escaping me right now. There's an encoding that only uses seven bits um, at a time because uh, it specifically expects ASCII. Right. Let's see. So we're so we got that byte. We got a byte out of there, substitution. And then what are we doing with that byte? What's this move? Byte pointer, EVP plus ECX plus VARC DL. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, that's what's going on. So we can rewrite, so if we take this, we can basically rewrite that as, here we go, move my pointer. Move by pointer. EBP plus ECX plus RC. We can rewrite that as EBP plus var C plus ECX. Right? ECX? Yeah, ECX. Yeah. So here is your base. Here is your index times uh, the length of your data type. Since this is, these are characters, it's your, uh, that the data type is one byte, so it's just going to be your index. And that we see previously got set to the increment variable. So what this is doing is this is just storing that value into a different memory location. Parsi. And then jump down here, we got our increments. So what this is doing, so 
move our zero to ax increment s that what this is doing is it's taking a look at what your input characters are and then using those as indexes into this array, but just through those order nipple. So did anybody or who went through and, and figured out, um, well, I guess, well, let's, let me take a step back. What's going on over here? This is the easy part. Compared to giants. Yep, we're doing a string compare to giants and testing if the result is zero, and if it is zero, then we jump around. So what, uh, so what we want here is we want the resultant string to be giants, or the, the decoded string to be giants. So what did we have to put for our input? Who, who came up with the answer to that? Uh, hmm? Let's give that a try. Bonk, bonk, bonk. What was that? O P E K M A. Capital lowercase. Lowercase. All lowercase. All lowercase. O P E K M A. K M A. Yay! I did that. So does everybody understand how we did that, how we identified the for loop here and the, the construct for the for loop and then the masking, the, the indexing into our character string and then the using the table to do a simple substitution. Any questions on that? 